Satish, can you share your presentation? I'll start then. So me, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see. Okay. Satish, can you share your presentation? This conference will now be I'll recorded. All right, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Soumya and I'll be your host for this session. So uh, before we proceed for yes. uh, today's session, I, I would quickly introduce you to Tech Canvas. So Tech Canvas is an IT certification well, training organization recorded. for professionals. We help students right. to so crack their everyone. certification exams and uh, first attempt. And so we are IIBA authorized session. and we are so, also uh, PMI endorsed. So we provide for, uh, certification training and to business analysis to uh, certifications, Canvas. for to example, the ECBA, CBAP, CCBA, Agile, and we also prepare uh, students for project management certifications into PMP, CAPM. We also have domain yes, training students. courses into banking, finance, healthcare, and many more. So uh, today's session is going to be very interesting. And we have with us Satish, who is CBAP certified business analyst with 12 plus years of experience in business analysis and product management. He has worked on large system implementation projects across verticals, retail banking, telecommunication, incentive compensation, taxation, and software license management. He is also one of our CBAP trainers. So welcome, Satish, and I would request you to take the session ahead. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, before we start, I request everyone to go on mute and turn off your video cameras. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, folks, so, so good morning and good evening. So let's get started. Uh, so as you all know, uh, today's uh, uh, webinar topic is uh, PAPM. And I believe most of you guys are preparing for your CCBA and CBAP certification. So this uh, session is going to help you with respect to your certification exam. So let us start with the uh, BAPM knowledge area. So this is the first knowledge area. I mean, uh, there are six knowledge areas in BAPOC. So this is the first knowledge area. I mean, if you go by the sequence, this is the first knowledge area. And for CCPA, close to 17% of the question will come from this knowledge area. And for CBAP, it is close to 15%. And uh, I mean, since I've already completed my CBAP certification, I'll give you a pro tip. This is one of the easiest knowledge area wherein you can score 100 out of 100. Like if they're asking you 15 questions, you can get all the 15 questions right. Because unlike... RADD, strategy analysis, RLM, solution evaluation. Uh, these are all things you cannot practically relate with uh, with that of your real world experience. But BAPM is something that if you read it once, uh, at least you can visualize that like whatever you read from BAPO, you can try to visualize what if you're implementing the same thing uh, like a B approach or information management approach. What if you get the opportunity to implement in your real world project? This uh, knowledge area is quite easy. I mean, from the visualization perspective. So with that note, uh, let's get started. So business analysis, planning, and model. Yeah. I guess, uh, could please go on mute? Yeah. Okay. So if I have to explain to you in layman terms, what, what do they cover as part of BAPM? BAPM is all about planning and monitoring. So these are the two keywords which you need to remember from the exam perspective. So what really happens in BAPM? Imagine that like uh, you joined some new organization as a business analyst, like uh, it's like your day one. And uh, you joined uh, Acme Corporation. Okay. And on day one, uh, after you join, you complete all your joining formalities. Um, you meet your um, senior manager or maybe i'll call sponsor i mean who is the in charge of that particular project so they are telling you that like as of now we don't follow any uh, ba i mean uh, there is no ba capability in the in that organization in acme corporation we don't have the ba capability so they want you to think uh, like how business analysis can be effectively carried out so now you guys got the understanding right so you are the one uh, going to plan the ba capability for your particular project in that organization 
So how you are, how are you going to come up with that uh, planning, business analysis planning, and how are you going to monitor it? That is what is covered as part of BAP. So in simple words, you are joining a new organization, and in that new organization, you are going to you are going to plan B activities. So uh, let me give you an example. So imagine you need to create a mobile app. Okay, that is going to be your project. So you will be uh, you will be working in this particular project, and this is like mobile app for students. So first, uh, uh, you ask the sponsor like, what kind of project I'm going to work. So sponsor will tell you that like this is going to be a mobile app, or this is for the students and everything like uh, very high level information. So first thing you need to verify is the scope. So why you need to verify the scope? It's like the client hundred percent sure of what they want. So this is something which you need to ask the sponsor. So if you get some vibes that like client is hundred percent sure on what they want to build, then you can think about because the first why you need to focus on the scope is you need to finalize the SDLC method or SDLC methodology, right? So you need to focus on the SDLC methodology. You need to first find out what should be the SDLC methodology, and based on it, you can effectively plan the B activities. So first question you will ask is the scope. If it is hundred percent sure, then in that case you can recommend to go for waterfall. Or, I mean, waterfall is something which we use in our real world. As per BAPOC, it is going to be predictive. If the client is ninety nine percent sure, but one percent uh, they are quite confused. So in that case, your recommendation is to go with agile or adaptive. So now this is the first task you need to find out. You need you can talk with the sponsors or you can talk with all the stakeholders. Only when you understand the scope, or maybe only when you understand the business need. The business need is the trigger point. So I, I we discussed about the scope, right? So maybe I'll now substitute scope with that of the business need. Once I identify the business need, and if I if I'm Getting some vibes that like hundred percent, I know what the client wants. Then I would recommend uh, let's go with waterfall. If there is even one percent uncertainty, then my recommendation is to go with agile. So now first step in BAPM is to identify this approach. So let me add the keyword. The first task: plan BA approach. Okay, plan business analysis approach. So this is going to be your first step. Okay. So now let's go back and see our slide. Business analysis, planning, and monitoring. It deals with the definition, planning of B approach, governance, and monitoring. So now let's see. There are five tasks. So let's go one by one. In the interest of time, I cannot go detail because I can talk about this BAPM for three, four hours. So I'll give only a high level overview of about each of the tasks. So like the first task is plan business analysis approach. So now we are at this juncture, plan business analysis approach. So now at this stage, according to our story, the only input which we have with us is the business need. So you guys know when you join the project, you you want to understand about the business need from the stakeholders. So the only input that is needed is going to be the business need, and the output of this particular task is since we are planning the BA approach, the output is going to be the BA approach. That's all. You are planning the B approach. Input is the business need. Output is the B approach. Simple, easy to remember. From exam perspective, you need to remember the input and output and the name of the element for all the tasks. Like there are thirty tasks in that box. You need to remember the input and output. I mean, ideally, I'm not recommending you to like mark up or memorize. If you read that box in this particular fashion, if you are able to connect the dots, like the battle is like uh, half won. Uh, if you think that like I'm going to memorize all the input and output, that is not going to work. You will have to always apply, uh, like think. Uh, I mean, I would want you to visualize. And from your current project, uh, if you can fit in this business need, how it all uh, works together, how all the dots can be connected together, that you need to work out. So now, the input and output for the first first task is done. So as per example, business need is needed, and once you identify the business need. You focus on the B up. The output is going to be the B approach. So, what is B approach? The approach is typically a form of a document. Okay. Now, what will B approach document consist of? So, now I'll first I'll write down what is the SDLC preferred preferred SDLC method. 
Okay. So, what will be the key contents in the B approach document? So, first, I'll the first section I will write about the preferred SDLC methodology. So, in my case, I'm going with Agile. So, according to Babok, it is going to be adaptive. And uh, this is the first step. You need to decide what is the methodology because only based on the methodology, you will be able to write down the list of B activities. Now, I will write about the B activities. So, if it is waterfall, it all starts with BRD, functional design documentation. And then uh, I may have to create use case document. I have to create UML diagrams. And uh, SRS is there, uh, system requirement, uh, specification document. And then there will be uh, end user guide. So these are all the list of activities uh, and uh, there will be UAT testing. So these are all the list of uh, testing which I need to do as part of the waterfall. And then comes the agile. And in agile, I'll have to talk about the product backlog. Just a second. Just give me a second. In Agile, you talk about the product backlog thing. And then you have sprint backlog. And uh, just a second, I'll be back. Just give me a minute. Sorry guys, so I'll just share my screen. Okay. So if it is agile, uh, it all starts with a uh, product backlog, sprint backlog. I'll have to do the planning meeting. I'll have to do the grooming meeting. And then there is the retrospective. And uh, demo. So these are all the list of B activities which I have to do. And then I'll also publish the BA timelines also, B activities timeline. So in this B activities timeline, when am I going to do the BID? When am I going to write the FRD use cases? When I'm going to create the product backlog? So those all things also I publish. And then I'll also publish the risk, like uh, what all things can be the problem from the risk perspective with respect to the B activities. For instance, if I don't have the domain knowledge or what if I don't get the support, uh, required support from the stakeholders, so that can also be a problem. So these, these things, I mean, on a very high level, will be added in the B approach document. Now let's go back and check our slide. So plan B approach is all about defining the appropriate method to conduct BA analysis, BA business analysis activities on a given initiative. So the input is going to be the needs and the output is going to be the business analysis approach. Now, if you look at the elements, First, you need to decide what methodology you're going to follow. So predictive is going to be waterfall and adaptive is going to be agile. And I do believe you guys know how to decide between waterfall and agile. So that is the basic thing uh, which we do in our IT projects. And then comes the plan business analysis approach. First, identify the planning approach. You are mentioning it. And then you talk about level of formality, like what level of detail you're going to include. Whether you're going to include a very high level information 
all very low level information and then you are talking about the business analysis activities and uh, when are you going to perform it iteration activities whether you are going to do it like within a month or within a year i mean within 3 months or 6 months the phase wise activity you are going to mention and then you are talking about the timing when are you going to do and in case if there is any risk which you anticipate in that particular project you are talking about it and uh, that's all about uh, business analysis approach now once you complete the business analysis approach you need to progress into the next stage so i'm not going to talk about the techniques so that is like all together there are 50 plus techniques so now i'm i'm going to the next task the next task is that like once you prepare the pe approach you need to work on the stakeholder engagement so once again i'll uh, give you a heads up what is stakeholder engagement so plan stakeholder engagement so the success of the project it completely it is dependent on the stakeholders the way how you collate all the information the way how you elicit information from the stakeholders these all things matters so plan stakeholder engagement what what is the primary input like in order to do that task what will be the input so once again you will refer the business needs and you will refer the b approach so you have already created b approach as part of the step 1 right so now you will always in, you will include that b approach and include the business need now i'm going to tell you why these two documents are needed because business need document is going to tell you about the list of stakeholders whose voice really matters for instance here the business need is mobile app for students so now when i look into the business needs and this is going to be the mobile app so i know students is one of the stakeholder and uh, maybe uh, those lms folks uh, those who are adding the course content they'll be one of the stakeholders and uh, maybe marketing team sales team um, and yeah like i said i can give any number of stakeholders so when i look into the business need i know which type of stakeholders which department i should cater to and then comes the b approach the why i need to think about the b approach is if it is agile you know that like uh, uh, emphasis is more on communication if it is waterfall emphasis is more on everything has to be structured everything is done phase wise and everything so i will refer the b approach document i'll primarily look into the methodology the methodology will tell me how i'm going to deal with the stakeholders so that's why in plan stakeholder engagement approach you will look into the business needs and b approach and what will be the output once again easy to remember since you are planning stakeholder engagement the output is going to be stakeholder engagement approach that's all so this is also going to be a document and uh, i'll give uh, what will be the key contents in the stakeholder engagement approach the first thing will be the communication preference like uh, first we will create the stakeholder list yeah the first will be the stakeholder list and then will be the communication preference like how they wanted to be like whether you are going to have a formal communication with them or an informal communication and then you will prepare the list of who is the decision maker for instance uh, in case of uh, finance department is one of your stakeholder and there are more than 23 uh, stakeholders like who are part of the finance team so you cannot reach out to all the 23 stakeholders in order to like you know prioritize and everything so in that 23 folks you will identify one or two folks who will have that who is who who can who can be considered as the decision makers when it comes to prioritization or when it comes to negotiation and everything so you are also creating that list who is the decision maker uh, i mean between the stakeholders who has high influence high power because when it comes to like uh, uh, at times uh, if you have to take a decision so who should you consult so you have to identify those stakeholders also and uh, yeah and who is the approver so in case uh, you are creating a deliverable prd document so who will approve it so when can you say the requirements are approved and completed so likewise you will write about you will try to find out all the list of stakeholders here so this activity is called as plan stakeholder engagement so now let's go through a slide so plan stakeholder engagement so plan an approach to have a effective continued relationship with the stakeholders so you identify the stakeholders you analyze their characteristics and you also define the best collaboration approach 
So the input is needs plus B approach, and the output is going to be stakeholder engagement approach. So how do you perform this? The first step you perform stakeholder analysis. That is what we have mentioned here. You go create a stakeholder list and you try to find out like how many stakeholders are there, what is their attitude towards the project, who is the decision maker, and what is the level of power of influence. And then you think about how are you going to contact them. Like you will try to segregate those stakeholders who are all working in your same location, who are all from the different geographies. And like uh, if you have to do an elicitation meeting, whether it is always a teams call or whether it will be a workshop or like uh, if you plan for a brainstorming meeting, who all should include everything you're mentioning it. You're primarily uh, making a note of all the stakeholders and their preferences. And you also create one uh, table, like I'm going to send a status email. Every week I'm going to send a status email. So who all will be part of the status email? Uh, if there is a scrum call, who all will be part of the scrum call? So you're making a note here. So that activity is also taken care of here. So that's all about stakeholder engagement approach. So I'll just give you a small uh, example. So this is how you create, segregate the stakeholder. So once you get the list of stakeholders, you can segregate them into four quadrants, high influence, high impact. And this is the stakeholder communication plan. So you guys can see the status report, the frequency, you'll send it weekly. What is the communication format? Possible for drafting it. So likewise, you will make a note of it. So that's all about stakeholder engagement approach. Now let's talk about the next task. The next task is quite interesting. Now you're creating, uh, so let, let's uh, rewind. So you created B approach, you created stakeholder engagement approach. Now the next thing is plan BA governance. So what do you mean by the word governance? Governance means control. So what are the things which BA can control in that project or which will come under BA's jurisdiction? So if of all activities in the project, which all activities will come under, uh, under business analyst jurisdiction? So as per BAPOC, they have identified four areas, which is completely the prerogative for the business analyst. So it is imperative that the business analyst takes control of those four activities. So as per BAPOC, the four activities which your BA has to take control is, the first thing is, change control process. So tomorrow, if someone is uh, recommending a change in the requirement, how are we going to deal with it? And then uh, we will uh, talk about the approval process. So how are we going to do uh, deal with the approval and then the review and then the prioritization. So as per PEPOC, they have identified these four areas wherein the BA has to have complete control. So now as part of the plan BA governance, you will create guideline document for these four areas, like for these four tasks. Like for instance, in your project, if somebody has to do the change request, what is the process you need to follow? So that you will document. If, if for instance, you say that like the BRD is approved, how will you say the BRD is approved? What is the process or the workflow that is followed? You will write down the steps. And in your project, if you're following prioritization, I mean, you're prioritizing your user stories or requirement and you're following Moscow method. So in that case, you will have to clearly write down the rules why Moscow is followed or how Moscow will be followed in your project. So what BAPOC uh, advises is whatever you write as part of your BA governance approach, it has to be followed 100%. So before the start of the project, you are writing down the guidelines. So that means even when the project starts also, no matter the project manager or other stakeholders will come and influence you, but you're not going to go with their uh, decision or anything. Whatever you have even before the start of the project, whatever you have written down as part of the governance approach, those will be followed and those only will be implemented. So in order to avoid confusion at the later stage, it is imperative for a business analyst to create a BA governance approach and publish it to all the stakeholders so that everybody is aware. So whenever somebody is coming, I'm saying that like I need to change this uh, change this requirement. So you will say you can refer the governance approach. Whatever is uh, followed, whatever is written in the governance approach, that is how this project will run. 
So now you guys are getting it right. A business analyst is completely controlling it. So that point of control is what governance approach is all about. Okay. So now input is very easy. You need not memorize. You need not mark up. So once again, what is the input that is needed? So you guys need the business need, and uh, you guys need the B approach. And business need is not needed because uh, this is something more of like a guidelines document. So I need B approach because B approach will tell me whether it is agile or waterfall. Because agile and waterfall, it depends. Uh, CR, for instance, in waterfall, uh, the change request process goes through multiple stages of approval. In agile, there is no approval for change request. Tomorrow, if uh, my client comes and changes the requirement, I will add it as a user story in the next sprint. So that's the reason I need to have B approach as one of the input. And then I'll have the stakeholder engagement approach. Why stakeholder engagement approach? Because I need to know who is the approver. So that comes from the stakeholder engagement approach only. So these two primary things are needed. And this will give me the governance approach. Clear? So governance approach is a document that will be the guidelines document for these four processes, which you are going to follow in your project on the later stage. Okay, so now let me, let's go through the slide. So it defines how decisions are taken about change control, reviews, prioritization and approvals. So who is the decision maker? What is the process info required for decision making? So two inputs, stakeholder engagement approach and business analysis approach. And the output is going to be the governance approach. So you're creating a guidelines document like who is the decision maker? How are you going to deal with the change control process? What is the prioritization approach? And if there is any approval, how are you going to follow that? So those things are taken care. And then after you prepare the governance approach, the next task is to prepare the information management approach. Plan BA information management approach. So the keyword which you need to remember from the exam perspective is BA information. So this can be a very important exam question for CCBA folks. What is BA information? So BA information in uh, that you uh, as part of your BA activities, anything that you uh, consume or you create can be called as BA information. So you are having a meeting with the stakeholders. You are scribbling something in your notepad. That can be called as a BA information. If you're creating a mock-up, if you're creating a document, BRD, functional design document, prototypes, anything that you consume or create as part of your BA activities, it can be called as BA information. So now you guys, you guys understood what is BA information. Now, if you see plan BA information management approach. So the keyword which you need to remember from the exam perspective is where are you going to store and who will have access? So these are the two keywords which you need to remember, storage and access. So plan BA information management approach is all about storage and access. Okay, so now what are the inputs that is needed? BA approach, stakeholder engagement approach, and then finally the governance approach. So all the previous documents will be my input and here the output is going to be information management approach that's all it's no big deal i told you right bapm is one of the easiest knowledge area okay so now you guys understood how why the significance of all these three inputs so b approach stakeholder engagement approach and governance approach all these three are primary input and that once you uh, create this then you will go to you will create an information management approach document so what will be the key contents and information management approach? So it is all about storage. So where are you going to store the BA information? Like whether it will be a, like a share folder, SharePoint, uh, or a Kiki page, Confluence, likewise. And who will have access? And in case if somebody uh, wants to access, what is the process that needs to be followed in order to require access to that particular folder? You're writing it down here. And you're also looking into the traceability part, like uh, how are you going to connect all the dots in your project, like use cases, user stories, uh, documentation, 
technical design document, use a uh, user guide. How are you going to connect all the dots? That will be covered under the traceability. And you also look into the reusability part. Like how are you going to deal with the reusability? Like some of the requirements can be classified as reusable. So what is the process? Where are you going to store those reusability requirements? For instance, most of the uh, enterprise application, uh, the login will be SSO login, like single sign-off. So even if I work on 10 different enterprise application, I can reuse the same login requirements for those applications. So those all requirements can be, uh, I mean, I can label them as reuse, uh, reusable requirements. So how are you going to deal with that? So you're going to mention about all those processes here in this document. So this document is called as the information management approach. So let's go back and go to a slide. So what is the BA information? Very, very important from the exam perspective. So anything that a BA elicit, create, compile, and disseminate when you perform your business analysis activities called as the BA information. So how business analysis information will be stored and accessed. So these are the two keywords. So whenever you prepare for the certification, CCB and CBAP, always you need to remember these keywords because uh, in CBAP, they are not going to give you, they will just give you a scenario and they're not going to tell you which task or which knowledge area it is all about, but they will include all these keywords in that scenario. So in the scenario, if you see the word stored and accessed, immediately uh, it should, this particular task should flash in your mind. So that should be your amount of preparation. So like all you get is only two minutes for one question. So if you remember these keywords, right, as far when you are preparing, then uh, it is going to like drastically reduce uh, the time taken to solve a question. So you have stakeholder engagement approach, BA, BA, BA approach and governance approach, and the output is going to be information management approach. So you're organizing the BA information, you're planning the traceability approach, and uh, how are you dealing with the requirement reuse? Where are you going to store? Who will have access? And you're also adding additional information in the form of requirement attributes. So that's all about information management. Now let's discuss about the next task. So the next task is to identify BA performance improvement. So this is quite interesting, okay? So first four tasks, what we discussed, BA approach, stakeholder engagement approach, governance approach, and then information management approach. So all the four are planning, okay? So all the four tasks are planning activities. If you look at the last task, it is about monitoring. So what is the last task? It is all about identify BA performance improvement. So the fourth task is all about plan BA performance assessment. So monitor, sorry, not plan. So what is this activity? The sponsor is happy because you created all these four documents and uh, all the stakeholders have gone through this document and they have now got a clear idea how business analysis activities will be carried out in that particular project. Earlier, they did not have anything. Once you joined the project, you created all these documents. Now the sponsor is getting some confidence. Okay, fine. Now B activities will be effectively carried out. But sponsor has a doubt. Sponsor knows that like the success of the project completely depends upon the business analyst. How will I know that you are an effective business analyst? So sponsor is asking you to come up with some performance measure. So sponsor wants to measure the performance of a business analysis, a business analyst and the business analysis activities. So what sponsor wants you to is to come up with some performance measures. So ideally the common business analyst performance measures which we follow in our project is uh, number of defects. For instance, uh, scope creep and everything, right? Like in case uh, requirement gap. So you're saying that like per quarter, only three defects can be raised under BA. So that is uh, acceptable range. And the second thing is related to the timeline. You will complete all the deliverables within the stipulated timelines. In case, uh, the, in case if you are not able to complete, that will be less than 5% only. So that is also another uh, thing which you have, I mean, you're just giving this performance measure to the sponsor. So now sponsor will check that like, okay, you when me number of defects is only three and timelines is less than 5%. Now sponsor, what he does is like after six months, sponsor wants you to find out what is the actual figure. So this is going to be like the estimated uh, uh, number. Sponsor wants to find out 
After six months, sponsor will check the era, and uh, sponsor will see number of defects that are tagged under business analyst name. So sponsor finds out that like there are eight defects that are tagged under business analyst, and sponsor will also check like how many times you promise that like you will complete and whether you completed within that stipulated timeline. So that was like hardly around imagine twenty percent. So now this gives a red flag to the sponsor that like the business analysis activities is not carried properly because there is a huge variance. Estimated is three and actual is eight. So that shows that like as a business analyst, you are not doing a pro. I mean, you are not doing it effective, or there may be other factors also that contributes to it. So now, sponsor wants you to come up with some preventive action or corrective action. So what is preventive action what can you do from your end in order to stop stop it from happening like uh, there are eight defects what can you do in the next quarter in order to ensure that like uh, it doesn't go more than three so that is called as preventive action so you say you say that like uh, uh, next quarter I, I i will come up with some uh, review guidelines or something process guidelines in order to keep that number of defects less than three so this is something that is what you do from your end that can be called as a preventive action Corrective action is something the damage is already done. So eight defects is under your name. What can you do in order to reduce the impact? So because of these eight defects, the developers and testers they will not be able to uh, progress on that particular requirement. So what can you do from your end in order to reduce the impact? That comes under corrective action. So now you guys understood, right? This is called as BA performance assessment. So after you work on all these four uh, approaches, sponsor wants you to come up with also this performance assessment, performance measures also in order to check whether the business analysis uh, activities is effectively carried out or not. Clear? Now let's go through the slide. So what will be the input here? Obviously the performance objectives because every company will have their own performance objectives. So performance objectives is one of the input. And then you will have the B approach because B approach is like the uh, su super set. All the B activities is mentioned in the B approach. So B approach is the only thing. So B approach and performance objectives. And since here you are monitoring B A performance assessment, the output is going to be B A performance assessment. That's all. So now let's go back and read the slides. So assessment of BA work and identification of improvement areas, you define performance measure and you conduct analysis of data and take actions to improve. So performance objective external plus BA approach, the output is going to be business analysis performance assessment. So first step, you do a performance analysis and then you come up with the performance measure. So I came up with quantitative measure. Sometimes you can also come up with qualitative measures also, maybe your communication skills, it can be it can be one of the metric your facilitation skills can be one of the metric so when you prepare this you need, you can come up with both quant and uh, quantitative and qualitative measures and then actual measurement data is compared against the defined measures so what was promised and what is actual and then you try to find the variance and finally either you can come up with preventive action or corrective or improvement action can be taken so this you need to submit a report. So this is called as BA performance assessment. So I'll just show you an example. So number of defects, expected value is three per month. And uh, the actual value was four uh, defects per month. And what is the corrective action? Get the defects fixed. What is the preventive action? Conduct regular reviews to prevent defects. Schedule variance is less than 3%, but actually is 5%. So corrective action is to communicate to the stakeholders for the possible delay. And the preventive action is weekly you do a review session in order to stop it from happening. Okay. So that's all about our business analysis, planning and monitoring. So on a very high level, okay, because all I had is like close to 45 minutes. And in this 45 minutes, I gave an example. So if you can remember this example, it's more than enough. I'm, uh, let me uh, also give you a heads up. So from an exam perspective, what kind of questions you can expect? So you need to be sure about the input and output and the name of those elements. 
So for CCPA folks, directly or indirectly, they will ask you like, you are going to do plan business analysis approach. What are the things that you need to keep in mind? So you guys need to remember about the needs, uh, input, output, and you also need to remember the name of all the elements. Like you need to know the planning approach, formality, business analysis activities, timing, complexity, and acceptance. So you need to remember the name of all the elements. So why I'm asking you to remember all these elements? If you don't remember it, you may feel lost because the questions will not be in the sequential order. So uh, in case you may get confused, you may get confused between business analysis approach versus the uh, strategy analysis, RADD and everything. So only when you remember the name of the elements, it is easier for you to take some educated guess. And uh, guidelines and tools, there will be only three or four questions out of 120 questions. This you can take an educated guess. This will be very confusing. Uh, unlike input and output, uh, you cannot connect the dots with respect to it because in the first knowledge area, there will be some references on third knowledge area, fourth knowledge area, and fifth knowledge area. At all. So this you can take an educated guess. And uh, techniques, uh, if you remember all the 50 techniques, like for instance, uh, what brainstorming can do, like in which scenario brainstorming can be effectively employed, how can you do brainstorming? Then in that case, easily, even if they ask you a technique question, you can easily take an educated guess. So techniques is not a big deal. So And uh, it's not possible for you to remember the name of all the techniques for all the tasks. So where you can concentrate is in the exam, if they ask you about reviews, you should know how reviews, in which particular situation reviews can be used. Um, how will you do review session? So those kind of questions, if you're confident, then you can take an educated guess. Stakeholders, uh, definitely you will get two or three questions, wherein uh, for CCBA folks, minimum six questions, like they will ask you for plan B approach who are all the stakeholders who are part of that particular meeting. So you need to remember the name of the stakeholders. And this is also quite an easy exercise only because once you know the role of each stakeholder, then it is easier for you to find out like who should be part of this discussion. So that's all about it. For CBAP folks, you can expect scenario-based questions from governance approach and information management approach. So each and every line from that particular two tasks can be converted into a scenario based question. But at the end of the day, once if you can, if you know information management is all about storage and access, you can easily answer that question. So with this, uh, we have completed uh, our uh, knowledge area. Now you guys can unmute yourself and can ask me any questions. Uh, Satish, uh, uh, hi, this Anupati. It's not a question. I mean, just maybe one uh, point I thought that uh, this session I think was really helpful uh, in terms of you summarizing one knowledge area. Uh, if possible, if we, if we can have a similar sessions for other knowledge areas, say say one on, on one day, I think that would be really helpful uh, for us. Uh, because this, this, this. I mean, although I went through BAPM multiple times, but uh, you know, going through the entire thing once in one hour helped a lot uh, to you know remembering everything together. Uh, yeah, we are planning this session every month. Yeah. Like every month will be one knowledge. Area. Yeah. You can reach out to Sonia. Okay. So okay. Much. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Thank you. So Eugene, you had a question. What BA performance KPI do you use at your work? I mean, uh, primarily it is all about defects, uh, timeline, communication skills, qualitative measures also, certifications. Those all things are the performance measures. How do you measure timelines and defects? So it was there in the slide, right? So how many defects per quarter, per release, per sprint? Any other questions? I think Faraz has a question. Okay. I'm not able to see in the screen. I can see only Eugene's uh, question. Uh, one second, let me no, no, He has raised his hand. I guess uh, he wants to ask a question. If you can unmute and ask a question, please. I have a question on the uh, BA information management approach. Yeah. Um, you mentioned. Um, defining traceability and usability uh, yeah. i'm just asking around when you're in the in the planning stage 
you are not at the stage i think you are not really sure um if if requirements are reusable um because you haven't really done the elicitation how would you you go about um defining the reusability perfect a very good question so what i'm going to do is like i'm going to create the guidelines on how i'm going to deal with the reusable requirements where am i going to store how am i going to identify them like am i going to create a flag like a reusable or am i going to like uh, create a separate folder in jira for them so i'm just uh, creating a guideline for that so i'm not going to identify the requirements rather going to uh, write a guideline how am i going to deal with those kind of requirements reusable requirements you got it thank you thank you so much i got it Yeah. Okay. How to determine quantifiable measurement? So, ideally, quantifiable measurement from the performance uh, object. Uh, I mean, from the performance measure, anything that can be counted, anything that can be finite. So. you have to first list what is the b activities that you are doing anything that can be finite and anything that can be like tracked those things will become quantifiable for us for ecba exam are all the questions multiple choice yeah ccba ecba cbap everything is multiple choice with four options two options can be easily eliminated and out of the two one option is a good answer and other option is the best answer so you need to always choose the best answer according to webock okay any other questions guys I mean, are you guys clear about BAPM? Because nobody asked me any questions, so I'm just curious. Was the session helpful? I have a question. Uh, this is Veda here. Yeah. Uh, how to remember the techniques? Like uh, for each uh, thing that we have a techniques, like uh, uh, how yeah. to uh, remember? Veda, that is not at all possible. We cannot remember it. So what you can do is like you be very confident about all the fifty techniques. You should know about each technique when it can be used in which context. So that if you are uh, sure, then you can take an educated guess. Thank you. Yeah, for instance, brainstorming. When can I use brainstorming? Which scenario? Then you relate it with that of information management approach or governance approach. Then you will be able to connect the dots. you guys have any feedback about this session when you listen to it thank you if you are not able to turn on your mic i have one more question like how do we connect that uh, guidelines and tools uh, each one have uh, so how do we connect that one yeah veda so what you have to do is that like first complete all the six knowledge areas and then on a separate uh, thing you can write it down uh all the guidelines you can write it down and then you can see that like most of the guidelines will be repeating for the same knowledge area like for the spy task there will be three or four guidelines that will be repeating so you have to find out that so complete all the six knowledge areas read all the six knowledge areas all the 30 tasks and then uh you go and read guidelines you will be able to connect the dots yeah thank you Okay, Somia, uh, you can take the control then. Great. Uh, thank you, Satish, for the great session that we had, and thank you everyone for joining. So we conduct our webinars every Wednesday and Saturday for business analysis and project management. Uh, so yeah, you can go to our website and register for the upcoming session. Thank you once again for joining. 
Thank you. Thanks.